as a scientist, I've been trained to mistrust intuition, to mistrust my gut, and I've been trained to mistrust my emotions, my heart. You could say that I promoted my brain to the CEO of my life, because for me, it was only one thing, logic, the things we can see, the things we can touch, the things we can measure. And yet, life told me otherwise. Life told me that for real human connection and for an inside-out success, I should connect my tres amigos together, my brain, my heart, and my gut. I'm Carmen. I come from Spain. And where I come from, I was only expected to aim for a life of misery as an uneducated worker. I live in poverty, that's true, and even I starve for six years weighing 10 kilos less than I do today. My hair was so malnourished that it started to fall off so badly that I went teniente onil, you know? I shave it and say, what the heck? And yet I look great. <laughs> but it felt really lonely because my environment didn't understood that, yes, I was in poverty, but yet I was blessed with another kind of hunger. Maybe you guess which? A hunger for growth. I wasn't completely alone. I had my three, tres amigos with me, my brain, my heart, and my gut. And today, I'm a scientist with a PhD in nutrigenetics. I'm a mom of two amazing kids that drive me crazy. I'm a former executive with an MBA and more than a decade of experience internationally in research, healthcare, and sales. But most of all, most importantly, I'm the CEO of my own life, and I write and I speak about my passion, which is connecting our tres amigos, our brain, our hearts, and our guts together in order to get an inside-out success. We're going to discover three things today together. First one, we are going to learn how to identify our tres amigos. How do they sound like the brain, the heart, the gut? How can we identify them that they are talking to us? Second, we are going to crack open the two questions we need to answer in order to be able to connect them together, our brain, our heart, and our gut. And third, and most important, we are going to balance them. We are going to become CEOs of our own lives in order to make our decision-making real and get an inside-out success. So, let's get started. What about the brain? Let's identify the brain first, or first amigo. Well, you may think brain is about logic, it's about data, it's about science, it's about knowledge, right? And you would be right. So, Back in Spain, my formula for living was very simple. In order to get from A, poverty, to B, growth, a better life, I need C, education. And that is the very best I could get. That's a concrete example. But how does the brain sound to you in your life? You got some posits everywhere you got in your own seats posted, so please take them. And when a revelation, an intuition, a thought is coming, please write it down, because you are going to get some questions here that are important for you. Second amigo, the heart. How can we identify when we are listening to the heart? Well, it's quite simple, actually. The heart is the one who's going to lead you to take decisions from love instead of fear. That's it. Sounds simple and yet powerful. But let's put a real example, a real-life example. For example, try to imagine me, an ambitious career woman, wanting also to have babies. So I had one. But yet, I wanted to pursue my degree number five, so I wanted to do an MBA too. And please try to picture me with my two-week-old baby in my left arm, my Mac computer in my right arm, trying to pull the baby trolley with my right feet, 
and at the same time trying to open the door to the MBA class at the HHL with my elbow. Wasn't easy. It has been, to be honest, the most vulnerable moment of my life when I really feel insecure. And something else happened. In that moment, the CEO of my life, which was the brain, you remember, started to freak out. Beep, 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 no function. Like, wow. He couldn't cope with my new reality. He couldn't cope with the fact that I was an ambitious woman who also wanted to have a family. And I started freaking out and screaming at me. Who the hell do you think you are? Coming with a baby to an MBA class? Are you aware that your colleagues which I didn't know yet, at the other side of that door are highly achievers, you know, like global bad asses, and you are going to give your first impression like this? Don't take it personal, but you are not looking your best right now. You look quite exhausted. And that fluffy belly there, I say, excuse me? I just literally had a baby like two weeks ago, and the brain, and the brain goes on. Exactly, already two weeks ago, and the belly is still fluffy. My goodness. And you're wearing your flats, so as you can see, flats are not like my first choice. So it didn't help. And the brain kept going on. He kept screaming, you are not ready for this. We have no data. We have no experience. We have no knowledge how to do this. We don't have the right degree to do this. So why do you, you don't just go back home high below the bed, and feel ashamed for yourself for wanting it all. So the brain quit. But yet, another voice started calling me excitedly. Pick me, pick me. Brain doesn't have the answer, but I do. Pick me, pick me. You guess who it was? It was my heart. And he started saying, well, Carmen, it's true. You have no clue. That's OK. You have no role model to follow. You haven't done or seen this before. But yet, you want to grow as a person. You want to grow as a professional out of love for yourself. And also, you want a family out of love for your husband. So you will find your own path. You will create your own path. So start freaking out about how you're going to manage the next three years with a newborn baby, an MBA, and your career, and just do one thing. What it was? Just the next step in front of you. Push with your elbow that door and show up. It took the longest 60 seconds of my life to dare to go through that door. But I'm so grateful. I dared to trust my heart. Because at the other side of that door were amazing colleagues and teachers who supported me, who helped me. I'm getting goosebumps again. And they look at me like, what? You just had a baby, are going to do an MBA with us? You're a rock star. So for once, I realized, because they told me later, that I may be even being a role model, because some of our colleagues also decided to get pregnant and go for a baby. They just told me, well, Carmen, if you could do it, I can do it too. And that's powerful. That is the heart speaking. But that's my example. How does sound hard for you? How does it speak to you? How can you recognize it when it's talking? Let's go for our third amigo, the gut. The gut is that vibe, that feeling, that hunch that we have, that we cannot see, we cannot touch, and we cannot measure. And yet, it's there, powerful bringing us knowledge, wisdom, even if we don't understand it. So let's go for a concrete example. Back in Spain, when I was about to finish my PhD, I realized that my brain was telling me, well, finish up and run in the opposite direction. And yet, my gut told me, well, maybe if you stretch yourself to do an international PhD, if you go abroad, you will learn more, you will be better qualified, you will open your mind to other ways to work, to live, and to study. And I thought, well, I want to do that, but there was a lot of uncertainty. I didn't have money to go abroad. I was barely surviving in Spain as it was, because I was doing my PhD with no fellowship. 
And I didn't speak the language coming here to Germany. I barely speak English. I'm still working on that. Um, and yet, the feeling of my gut telling me, that's the right thing to do. Let's go do it. It's going to be right. This is going to improve our chances to get a better life abroad. So I did. And I'm so grateful because I came here for three months. I'm already 11 years. I didn't come back. But what does the gut sound for you? How does it speak to you? When can you recognize it? Let's go for the point number two. The two key questions we must ask ourselves in order to be able to connect these three amigos together. The brain, the heart, and the gut. Let's put a concrete example. A few years ago, I was commuting six hours a day in the highway, driving to my logical, perfect management job. And honestly, I was exhausted. I had two little kids, and I was mentally and physically exhausted. So much so that they fall asleep in the highway at 250 kilometers per hour. That is roughly 155 miles per hour. And I don't know why, but thanks God or the universe or whoever you want to call it, I woke up just 10 centimeters apart from the truck of the next car in front of me. And I could avoid, in the last minute second, a car crash. Not just that, but a chain car crash because it was rush hour. When I came back home, I had to ask myself one question because something wasn't right. I had to ask myself the question, well, if this game that we call life can be over in any minute, if I could be dead tomorrow because no one can guarantee me otherwise, what should I be doing today? Please, ask yourself the very simple question right now and let your gut and your intuition and your heart answer for you. Let it flow. One idea, one posit. If you would be to be, to be dead tomorrow, what would you do today? Because for me, something wasn't working. My heart came to my help. I say, well, the brain is saying that you should keep going to your executive job. I mean, you have been working your ass off in order to get this, so it's logical. That's what everyone is expecting from you, so keep going. But my heart and my gut have another different opinion. They say, wait a second. If you're not sure, maybe you are doing the wrong question. Did you think about that? You have been asking during so many years just one question, what can I get? What is in for me? In every interaction, in every job, with every person I met, what can I get? Can I learn something? Can I get a degree? Can I get a raise? Can I get a job? And the heart there to challenge that and tell me, Carmen, what if you switch that question to what can you give? How can you serve? How can you put your strengths to help others? And then it came. It hit me like a slap in the face. If I should be dead tomorrow, what should I give? What should I do today? And I thought, well, I have to write a letter to my daughter to tell her about how I did overcome poverty thanks to connecting my tres amigos. And this letter eventually became a book. I quit my management job. I left executive job offers on the table. And now I do write and speak about connecting our tres amigos together for an inside-out success. Not just for my daughter, but for everyone who wants to take responsibility for their own destiny, independently from the card we have been given at birth. Third point we are going to discover together is how to balance, how to balance Los Tres Amigos, because it can get very messy when we got our brain, our heart, and our gut together. It can look like a compass with three different needles pointing you in completely different directions, right? I have to tell you a secret. I hear voices in my mind. Did you ever have the experience that the brain is saying something, the heart has another opinion, and the gut was something different? Well, it's true. When we dare to make our, the executive board of our life diverse, it's not as biased at the beginning. It's not just the brain, but also the heart and the gut. That's good, but let's be real. Diversity comes with two Ps. Diversity comes with a price, and diversity comes with perks, too. The price is clear. 
There is uncertainty bonded to it. There is a leap of faith you have to give. And there is some uncomfort you have to overcome. But the perks are worth it, I promise you. Because through this diversity of your tres amigos, you will gain an overview of an eagle over your own life. You will not just connect your tres amigos together, but be able to connect with others' brains, hearts, and guts, preparing you for a real inside-out success and connection. But it can go wrong as well, because at the end of the day, you are the CEO of your life, Are your tres amigos should be your executive board, giving you counsel, information. I also screw up. Even though I got that information, I choose to ignore it. For example, I was applying for a senior position as scientist. And you know, with this Spanish pride that I cannot get rid of, I told to myself, you have to get the job, you have to get the job, you have to get the job. That's my goal, nothing else. And I went there, and when I meet my employer, something happened. My gut got that vibe of toxicity, you know, when something is wrong, when you met someone, it told me, Carmen, let it go, drop it, let it go, this is not good for you. And yet, I didn't want to listen because my goal was to get in the job. So I went there, got the job, put the Spanish flag in the middle of the German lab, and I saw it, how it went in flames, down to ashes, defeated. I screw up. I had a huge breakdown, and I failed miserably, personally and professionally, because I didn't want to listen to my God. And then he told me, told you so, moron. And yet, it was my decision to take. So what does mean that for you? We have learned how to identify our tres amigos. We have learned the two key questions we should ask in order to connect them, to give them a voice which is, what would you do if you will be dead tomorrow? What should you be doing today? And what can you give? And the third, we have discovered how to balance them in order to get an inside-out success. But this is just me. The important question here is, what about you? What is your message? What is your mission? What is your book about? What is your TED Talk? Because I don't know you guys, but I'm just talking for myself. If I were to be dead tomorrow, there is nowhere else I would be rather than here, now, with you, connecting my tres amigos with yours. Thank you very much. Gracias.